Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you watching on the Northeast Modified Predator Carts page and for those on the grounds this afternoon, we bid you a warm welcome to Perry Sunflower Maze, our host for the Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause here today. And uh, the cause happens to be an organization called VCHC, and Michelle is going to tell us a little bit about the organization. Hey everybody, my name is Michelle, and I'm sure you'll agree with me that the words homeless and veteran should never be in the same sentence. Unfortunately, in our reality it is. It's events like this that help us raise awareness that it is not okay that we have Americans right now that are homeless in our community. Every day, every night, there are almost 40,000 veterans that have nowhere to sleep, that suffer from hunger pains, and have nowhere to turn. VCHC is that ray of hope. We have temporary housing, transitional housing, permanent housing. Freedom is not free. And these brave men and women that are behind me raised their right hand and took an oath to serve and protect our country. The least they deserve is a bed and a chance for a regular life when they turn home. We have, on average, about 1,000 veterans in our local community here that are living off the grid, living in their car, that suffer terrible hunger pains every night. Events like this give us the money to put food on their table. Darcy here is an Air Force vet, proudly serves at BCHC, one of our case managers. She is the boots on the ground. She goes out, she meets with those veterans, she finds out what are those barriers, how can we help, how can we get you in stable housing, how can I connect you to other peers who understand. So if you serve, it doesn't matter what branch of military you are, you're all brothers and sisters. We're all family. So it's days like this that we really want to raise awareness. This little girl go down shaking everybody's hand, that's where our future lies. This little girl and little kids like this are the future of our country. These brave men and women, their children, their families, they deserve support. When you see these young men and women when they come out, it's terrible. They don't know where to turn. They don't know how to turn. They don't know what's going on. Programs like this do save lives. The thing about this program is we are local, and 100% of all proceeds go to our veterans. It doesn't go to salaries, it doesn't go to paper or admin, it goes to support our veterans, and that's where we need to support them. Big shout out to this family. They are absolutely unbelievable people to reach out and say, hey, we want to help you raise money. We understand your cause. And to come out here the whole day I've been in tears. I can't believe the amount of energy and love they have brought together and awareness for our program that with this we will help save lives. Our veterans were losing 22 a day to suicide, which is not okay. This will help save lives, rebuild our veterans' futures, and for many years to come, they'll have new beginnings. So thank you so much for all that you've done to help us be out here, and thank you so much for listening to me, and God bless our veterans. Thank you very much, Michelle. At this time, I would ask that uh, if you are uh, seated, if you would please rise as you are able. And if you'd be so kind as to remove your hats, I'm going to turn the mic over to Pastor Greg for our invocation. Thank you. Well, we all have a platform. And Jesus said, you will be my witness. And that platform is to witness his love, mercy, and grace. And Jesus also said, there's no greater love than to lay your life down for your friends. And when we sign and raise our hand, that's part of what we do. So I would just say that uh, just to take a moment, think of someone in this world that we just know that needs prayer, and let's go to our gracious Heavenly Father in prayer. Well, Father God, what a beautiful day you have made, creation that you have made, you make the riches of your glory known. Lord, I pray that your guardian angels and your hand of mercy would be upon everyone here today. May someone just come to know you, just rest in you, Lord, that the peace that you provide this world will not give. Lord, I pray you just be with these drivers with the hope and perseverance. Keep by every driver, crew, fan, official safe, Lord. And truly, it is because of your mercy and grace and love that may we shower it with each other in this beautiful day that you have made. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special guest to perform our national anthem. 
Hi everybody, my name is Adelaide. I'm so I'm four years old and welcome to Sunflower Fifteen. Now I'm listening to National Anthem. My mom and dad help me practice so many times. And I love my family so much. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light? What's so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose what stripes and bright stars fill the pillow's fight for the lit rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bands bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh it's the land of the free and the home of the, the brave. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can't think of a better way to get a show started than that. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've had our opening ceremony, so now we're going to get down to the business of qualifying for this evening's Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause. We have five qualifying heat races on tap for you. The top four out of each of these heat races will redraw for starting spots in tonight's Sunflower 50. The only number they can't pick is one because the poll is up for bid to benefit VCHC, the uh, Veterans and Community Housing Coalition. And by the way, we'd like to extend a very special thank you to the Murphy family and H&M equipment as they were instrumental in having that flyover and we couldn't have timed it any better if we had tried. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get our first qualifying heat on track and ready to go. There's Dave Constantino with the number nine, the number 67W. That'll be the Welch machine. The 97T, that'll be Tanner Warner. We've got the uh, Duchesne, number 25, the Weiss 79, the Ginger Ninja Jack Laner in the 91. We have Corky Warner with the yellow nice and easy, number 97. And finally, we have the uh, number three up. That should be, I believe, Jesse Dumont driving the uh, three up machine. So again, these are the drivers slated to go here in uh, heat number one. Remember, top four will qualify. One to go signal being given at the start finish line. So we'll go green next time by to begin qualifying for tonight's Sunflower 50 race for a cause to benefit VCHC. So the field will make their way around through turn number four. They'll hit the start zone. Green flag waves. Constantino jumps out to the early advantage. Welch into second. They've got a tangle up in the middle of the pack. A few cars get together and get separated. That allows the top four to break away. And that is the uh, Duchesne, number 25, trying to fight for third on the outside. Now drops back down to the bottom lane as Constantino and Welch battle it out with two laps complete. The caution will wave for the first time. That is the uh, number 79, the Weiss number 79, in trouble over there in turn number two, got up into the flowers. 
So that is Owen Weiss in the number 79 getting back aboard. The rest of the field will get themselves lined up here. Two laps complete so far in our first qualifying heat event of the evening. Now, the carts that they're using here tonight, these are the uh, Northeast Mod Predator carts. They use a Predator engine that you can buy at Harbor Freight. Bolted into a chassis that is not new and some are older than that with the big side panels so they kind of look like a dirt modified. Cheap and expensive way to have some fun and race your friends. That's how this whole thing started. So the field doubled back up for a restart with two complete. Dave Constantino leads the 67 of Welch outside the front row in second. Jack Lehner is third, the 25 of Duchesne is fourth, holding that final qualifying spot for the moment as we go back to green. Constantino leads it through turn number two, and again, he'll come off that inside lane, now pushes out wide in three and four. Welch didn't have any room to get through. And we are again under caution as another car has found the flowers out there in turn number two. And that is going to bring the yellow flag out. It looks like uh, Corky Warner with the number 97 having a little bit of an issue and falling around to the back of the field. So again, Constantino leads. Welch is in second. Leonard is in third. One out of a transfer spot right now. That is the uh, number 97. The nice and easy 97, that is Corky Warner, who sits right now in the number five spot, one away from a transfer with two laps complete. And then you've got the uh, Dumond at number 31J behind, and then the cars that have been involved in some of the early race cautions, including the Trump 2024, that was the most recent caution. That is Hayden Cutlip out of Southfield, Massachusetts. As we have multiple states represented here. We are ready to go racing once again. Single file for the start this time. As they come off turn number four, Constantino will lead them down off turn number two and down the back straight. Here comes that 31J of Dumont making a nice pass on the outside of Corky Warner. That'll move him into the number five spot. Meanwhile, to shame down to the inside of the ginger ninja jack leonard as we have hit the halfway point four down four to go one card spun down to the infield we'll stay under green as constantino continues to lead welch to shame and now the ginger ninja jack leonard is on the hot seat holding down the final qualifying position here out of heat race number one and something just let go on the ginger ninja's cart oh and at the same time corky warner gets his flowers over and turns one and two and the caution flag will wave now with six laps complete And folks, as you may have noticed by now, one thing about a uh, race like this, where it's informal, is you are your own tow truck. If you get in trouble, you get to yank your cart out of the uh, out of the flower bed. Well, not until I mean we'll give you some help, but you see our second heat is lined up on the infield pit road, and they're watching here as. They're trying to figure out the fastest line around the track. The track already starting to take up some rubber. So with six laps down, we get ready to come to this restart. Constantino puts the power down. New fourth place car is going to be uh, Owen Weiss with the number 79. Remember, he had issues earlier. It was one of the first cars off the track as the white flag waves. But he's going to get a little tappy tap at the back door, and Dumont's going to go through. Still that final transfer spot, so it's Constantino with the win. Duchesne moved up into second with the 25, Welch third with the 67, 
And there you can see the fist bump from Dumas with the 31J picking up the fourth and final transfer spot. So that will send the rest of those competitors back into one of the two consolation races. All right, so for heat number two, your pole sitter is going to be the uh, Perry number 74. Outside the front row is going to be Rocco Constantino with the 71R. And then we're going to have the 405. That is one of the Whitbecks, Travis Whitbeck, out of Brunswick. And on the outside with the 1B, that is going to be Brett Mortensen. Row three on the inside with the uh, three UR. That's going to be Mike Russ. And on the outside will be the number seven H. That'll be the uh, Hovis number seven H. And then we have the 77. That is another one of the Weisses. That is Dave Weiss. Mike Coffey is in the number one outside that row. And he'll be outside row four. And finally, we have the number 27 of Tomek Kowalczyk. And a big thanks to our friends from Empire Hay for providing the hay bales around the outside of the flowers there. And a little second level, if you will, of track protection. If you need bales, small or large, or you're looking for custom mowing or custom planting, they will need to hook up with the folks from Empire Hay. We also want to say a special thanks to the folks from DKM Fabrication as well as JK Sign Works. And, of course, we are all here to help VCHC, the Veterans and Community Housing Coalition. By the way, if you're watching our live stream and you'd like to know how you could donate to VCHC, visit their website. It's vchcny.org. vchcny.org. That's VH, or vchcny.org. You can find out all the information about the organization and how you can make your own personal donation to add to the money that we've raised here today. All right, so getting the drivers squared away and uh, lined up where they belong or close to it because we all know how racers are with lineups, right? I see, I see some of you have got that smart grin on your face like, yep, been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Okay. Now, I think we've got everybody slotted in where they belong, so we should get the white flag this time. Now, Joe Chris is kind of playing umpire over there. He's got one of his junior flaggers that is made in the silks for him here this afternoon, assisted by Roman Hendrickson on the back stretch. Field comes around, green flag waves. He race number two is off and running. Who will prevail from the inside or the outside? From the outside, it's going to be Constantino. Rocco jumps into the lead, but the yellow flag is waving. There was trouble for the 405 of Travis Whitbeck, and he is backed up from the inside hub. And he'll go ahead and roll back out. Now, unlike some form of carts that have flathead or clone motors that need what they uh, need the uh, bump box to start them, these things, well, they're just kind of like your old school lawn mowers. It's a recoil start, so it just takes somebody to reach over and pull the recoil and get them refired, and they usually fire up pretty quickly. So the field is bunched back up here, ready for a restart. They make their way back down off corner number four into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. And coming off turn number two this time, it's going to be Perry with the advantage. A little jam fest up in the middle of the pack. Cart's going every which way. And the yellow flag will wave with one lap complete. And we had our version of one of the big ones from last night's uh, Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona. If you haven't seen the highlights yet, I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, they wrecked some cars last night, just saying. Hopefully we don't wreck too many cars tonight, although we are doing a number on the flowers. So we'll get the lineup squared away. Leanne Oxett, by the way, handling the uh, scoring duties with some help and assistance here this evening.
Okay, now I think we have everything squared away where it should be. We'll get a one-to-go signal. And we'll look for the green flag when they come back to the restart zone between the two cones here. In turn number four, leader fires first anywhere in the box. And we are back underway in the 74. A Perry pulls out about a cart length advantage over Constantino in second. The 1B of Brett Mortensen sitting in third. And then the 27 of Tomek Kowalczyk has come from the back of the field up to fourth, but now having a battle with the number 77 slipping down to his inside. That is going to be the other Weiss, the number 77. That is Dave Weiss. The Weiss moves up into the number five spot of the top four. All tight together, a one car pulling out wide and going a lap down as they shuffle the deck down here, going down here through turns three and four. We've got a spinner. It's Mike Coffey with the number one. Mike will get it back out on the racing surface, but he's got to pick up the pace because the leaders are coming up on him in a hurry. Rocco Constantino leads with three to go with the number 77. The Perry 74 is second. Mortensen is third. And Dave Weiss now has the final transfer spot in that fourth position as they get ready to come around for the white flag this time. Mike Coffey gets dumped by your leader, and the yellow flag will wave. Consider the chrome horn applied, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. Somebody's being bad. I think we're sending somebody to the back of the bus. I know it was a lap car, but even so... Sorry, folks, that comes from above my pay grade. That's uh, all right. There's still a consolation race, and there's still two laps to go in this one. By the way, moving up to third now is going to be the uh, Ovis number uh, 7J as we get ready for the restart here. Yep, and they were trying to get the Perry number 74 back up where it belonged. He thought he had to go to the rear as well. Like I said, racers and lineups, that's all you need to know. All right, green flag back in the air. It's a green-white checker finish. Now Perry leads it down the back stretch with Mortensen trailing. The battle's going to be on for that final transfer spot. Tomek Kowalczyk trying to get in there. Here comes Mike Coffey back with the number one. They're going to get battling amongst each other, and that is going to allow the seven of Ovis to escape. As they go across the line, Perry wins. Mortensen finishes second. Weiss will grab third, and Ovis in the black and red number seven will go on to collect the final qualifying position here out of heat race number two. All right, heat number three will be coming out to the track here momentarily. We're going to have the uh, number 151 slated to go, in, go from the pole position. That's uh, Bryce Bailey. And the coach's pizza car, and on the outside with the Jumpin' Jack Johnson side plates and a tribute to the legendary Jumpin' Jack, that's Loudon Reimert out of Oley, Pennsylvania. And then you've got the 438 scheduled to go inside row number two. That is going to be Nick Scavia. And on the outside will be the 19 of Jordan Banks. Third row inside, Eric Mack with that tabloid graphics 15. Outside of him should be the uh, straight number 12. And then we're going to have uh, the number uh, 71. That'll be Gerald uh, Gerard LeClaire in memory of Shorty Racing tonight. And the 11A of Ryan Pepicelli. So, again, eight laps the distance, third of five heat races. Top four will go to a redraw. 
So the four qualify, everybody redraws except for the pole because the pole gets auctioned off to the highest bidder. The white flag waves. We should be ready to go green next time by. Field doubled up and ready to go. So they make their way here off turn number four. And it's a good smooth start for Bailey. He'll lead the pack into turns one and two. Reimert on the outside trying to hold on to that second spot. Has the 438 and Nick Scavia right up alongside. Eric Mack up into the number four spot with that tabloid graphics 15. A throwback to the legendary Billy the Kid Pouch. Storming his way up through now. Here comes the Banks number 19. So Jordan Banks now finds himself in a transfer spot as he punts Reimer back to the number five position. And he may not be done as we've already completed lap number three, closing in on the cross flags at the halfway point here in heat race number three. Back off turn number four. It's about a two-car length advantage for Bailey with the 151. Scabia second. Matt goes out a little bit wide in turn number two. Banks trying to get underneath him. And here comes Ryan Pepicelli from the back of the field now. Ryan is going to work his way underneath Reimer. And he is one away from a transfer spot. But there's only two laps left to go as the top four skim off turn number two down the backstretch here. And come to the white flag. Bailey trying to hold on. Scavia tucked in behind. There's a move by Ryan Pepicelli on the final lap. And that move is going to put Pepicelli into the show. Pepicelli steals fourth on the last lap. Mack finishes third. Scavia takes second. And Bailey with the 151 comes away the winner. All right, qualifying event number four making its way out onto the track. It is going to be David Schilling with the 20S. On the front row, on the outside is going to be the Pierce 32. That's the Kaus 827, and the Menti 24P is row number two. Row three, Gedman with the 18J, and we've got uh, Brady Gill all the way from the North Country with the number 51 outside row number three. And then it looks like the uh, seven of David Herrick. We'll have the uh, number 59. That's the slot back car alongside him. And then finally... Rounding out the field should be the Coons, number 29. That would be Bob Coons out of Mechanicville. So that will be the field here for qualifying event number four of five. Again, eight laps the distance. Top four qualify for the Sunflower 50 race for a cause, but they all have to redraw. All right, so Jacob Lappin is doing the flagging. Joe Chris is doing the umpiring, so to speak, hanging in there behind him. So Jacob, our junior flagger for the day, doing a great job waving the silks here on the front stretch. Gets ready to send this one on its way. Oh, and there's a the big one. Well, I guess we'll have to try that one more time from the top. It looks like I think just about everybody's going to be able to roll away. The last car that needed to be fired up was the uh, Menti number 24P. That is Mike Monte with that number 24P, the JJP slip form and concrete car out of Ken and Jahiri. So the field's starting to line back up. And something that sort of resembles the lineup here. White flag is waved, so we'll try to start one more time when they get down here into the start zone in turn four. Mm -hmm. 
Good launch for the field as they head down into turns one and two. Everybody keeps it straight this time off turn number two. Whoa, and as I say that, they're three wide, and Gill dives through the middle and jumps up into the number three spot. Schilling leads. Monty is second. Gill coming from a couple of rows back now up into the number three position, followed by that number 32 of Pierce rolling in fourth. Oh, and Pierce just spun out of a transfer spot, and it's going to get hung up on the top edge of the track, bringing out the caution flag. And actually getting hung up on the top of the track is something new. If you were uh, here with us last year, you'll notice that some banking has been added to this racetrack. The field will go ahead and line back up, double file here, two laps complete in our fourth qualifying heat. under green. Schilling leads them off turn number two. And we've got the Coons 29 tangled up with the 519 of uh, Slotbeck. And it looks like Slotbeck will head into the pit area. And I believe we'll go with the two cautions on the same lap rule equals a single file restart. Following the same procedure as you would see at most racetracks here in the Capital District. And while we're under this caution flag, looks like trouble for Mike Monty's number 24. I don't know if that cart through a chain Looks like that might be the case. One to go signal is going to come up here for the field. He's going to be able to continue. He's getting the helmet off down there in the infield, unfortunately. So we'll come around here. We'll get the one to go signal. So Jacob waving the white silks at everybody. Next time around, we'll get this one back underway again with two laps complete. The back works their way off turn number four. Back to the green. Schilling leads it. Gill in second. Gill with the nose down to the inside as they come down into turn number three. Leader gets turned around. And Schilling will pull it down into the infield as the yellow flag waves. And Gill with the 51. It's going to voluntarily head back to the tail of the field and just kind of nod in his head like, yeah. That was my bad. Sorry about that. And David's going to say, how do you do? That was kind of an aw shucks kind of moment right there. Now, the question is to see if those two are going to be able to get back into transfer spots because we're still only on lap two. So we'll come back around here looking for the green. Oh, look at Schilling trying to drive around the outside. Oh! Not for nothing, but that may have been a little bit of racing karma right there. I mean, they're out there, they're racing, but they're also having fun, so I'm sure Dave's like, darn it. Looks like the front end of the cart's okay, though. Oh, 
All right, so we'll go one to go here. We're still on lap number two, so you haven't missed anything. All right, your brand new leader now is the Getman 18J. And right now it is the 827 of Callis that sits in the final transfer spot. Coons trying to make a move for that as they go into turn number three. And Coons going to try to do it the long way around on the outside. And here comes Gill and Schilling. And they're loaded for Baron Schilling is again off the track and out in the uh, flowers in turn number two. And what started off as a fairly benign heat race has become a rather eventful one for the Schilling number 20. And the competitors in this one definitely get in their restart practice, and I think something may be broken on Schilling's card. He'll take it over pit side. So, again, it is uh, the 18J that is holding on to the lead. That is Joe Getman. He's from uh, Lafargeville, so he's another North Country person like uh, Brady Gill is. We've got a few of them represented here in this Northeast Mod Predator car class today. Getting ready to come back to the green with three laps complete. And Getman will hit the throttle. And the number seven back there in the second position, that should be the... Uh, David Herrick, number seven. The 32 rolling up into the third spot. That is going to be the Pierce, number 32. And now the caution waves again. Ah, I see. We may have had somebody pick the throttle up just a wee bit early. Now, you can see that uh, Brady Gill has worked his way back into the final transfer spot with the 51. He, too, has had a uh, rather eventful, shall we say, heat race. And now Gill will sweep down to the inside of Pierce, take over that number three spot. Now here comes the Coons machine. That's Bob Coons with that orange number 29 to, trying to draw in on Pierce here for the final transfer spot. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, it is Joe Getman holding on to the advantage as he comes to the white flag. And he's holding about a two-card length advantage as the field finally gets to string out and log some laps to come to the checkers. So Getman gets the win. David Herrick finishes in second. Third spot goes to Brady Gill. And then the uh, Pierce number 32 comes away with the fourth position. That is T.J. Pierce, who will qualify for tonight's Sunflower 50 race for a cause. So the fifth and final heat race makes its way up onto the raceway now. And slated to go from the inside of the first row. Logan Hatch's Northeast Custom Flatbeds number 18H. I don't see Hatch. And that'll put Chip Constantino up to the inside of the first row in the uh, Dave Blaney Matson overhead doors number 10 ride. Garrett Poland up to the outside of him. And then Riley Gill in the Lafargeville Toyota number 57 on the inside of that second row. Up to the outside of him will be Justin House in the number five. House out of Gloversville with the Adirondack Express lube entry. And back on the inside of row number three, the 2JD, that should be Jared Dyer. Out to 
outside him in the 21, Quinn Wallace. And out of Sussex, New Jersey, in the Pepsi number 20, it is the man himself, Brett the Jet, Brett Hearn. One lap on the board now. Chip Constantino showing the way. Second spot right now, the five of Justin House. Poland holding down the port. Hang on. Hearn and Jarrett Dyer get together, and that's going to bring out Yellow. Quinn Wallace into the hay bales as well to avoid as Hearn and Jarrett Dyer in the Ronnie Johnson look-alike machine get together. Dyer from Rotterdam in the zero racing entry. Him and Hearn will head to the tail, as well as it looks like the five of house. So that will promote Poland up to the number two spot with Chip Constantino still out in front. As we work the line up here, Quinn Wallace currently in the fourth and final transfer spot with the 21W. The Constantino and Poland on the front coming to the restart going out of turn number four. The green flag is out and we're back to it. Constantino and Poland lean on each other down the straightaway. Gill trying to get involved. Now Wallace goes around the outside of him for third. Also trying to work the top right now, Jared Dyer, and hang on. Riley Gill into the hay bales in turn number four, and that's going to bring out Yellow once again. So Gill goes from a transfer spot to the tail. Jared Dyer also in trouble in turn number two. Three laps shown complete on the lap counter just outside the second turn as Jared Dyer is able to get going once again. Looks like we're going to be ready to go next time by out of turn number four. So Constantino and Poland, Quinn Wallace, Jared Dyer, those are your four transfer cars right now. Hearn one spot out with Justin House and Riley Gill. Back underway. Poland to the inside of Chipper. Hearn looking inside Dyer now as they go down the back straight away. Side by side, Quinn Wallace trying to get around Poland. Jarrett Dyer trying to go three wide in the middle. Constantino running away with it. Hearn on the outside of Poland and puts him in the hay bales. Yellow back out. Hearn with a run to the outside of Garrett Poland. Turned out to the bottom to try to get back in line. And Poland ends up taking a trip into the hay bales. Top four transfer to the main. Looking to go green next time by. Chip Constantino has not been seriously challenged so far. Quinn Wallace, Jarrett Dyer looking to change that. Brett Hearn right now riding in the fourth and final transfer spot. Riley Gill, Justin House in the five, Garrett Poland in the 17, as we go back to green off turn number four. Oh, and Wallace does not fire at all. Quinn Wallace does not get going. And that created a massive problem at the start at the two to go sign now. 
Jared Dyer trying to work the top. Hearn trying to work underneath him. Quinn Wallace just ahead of them. White flag is out, and there's trouble. Justin House has got a problem. Chip Constantino is going to win it going away. Second's going to go to Brett Hearn. Oh, Jared Dyer, there is nothing left of the two car. Constantino, Hearn, Wallace, and Dyer, the top four. Now, I, I know these guys are competitive. This is supposed to be fun, but unfortunately, sometimes stuff like that happens, like happened to Dyer's card, and that's not necessarily fun because you got to fix all that stuff. Well, it's fun for us, Paul, and it's fun for, uh, for everybody here taking it in today. But, yeah, no, trouble, not the way Jared Dyer wanted to go, and, and he's fortunate he's made it to the A-Main. He's going to have a little bit of time during the con to work on that cart. Uh, but, yeah, not the way he wanted to end that heat race, I'm sure. All right, so we are going to do the redraw here on the uh, front stretch in about five minutes, and that'll be for the 20 drivers who have already qualified, except there's no number one pill. Like I said, the poll is going to be auctioned off to the highest bidder, but spots 2 through 20 will still be open in the redraw. Following the redraw, then we'll have the consolation races. Each of those consolation races advance two cars. And then we have provisionals and buy-ins, just like any series race would. We'll tag those on the back of the field, and that'll make up the starting field for our Sunflower 50 race for a cause. And again, if you're watching on Facebook and you'd like to make a donation to help the Veterans and Community Housing Coalition, visit their website. It's vchcny.org. V vchcny.org. They help a homeless or at risk of becoming homeless veterans and their families over a seven-county area here in the Capital District. A great cause, no question about it. And, Paul, while we've got a minute, I wanted to ask you about this. When I heard that you were going to be here today, I was excited for you because, uh, as uh, many of the people that are with us know, um, you are uh, famous, well, for a number of things, but, of course, you're your TV role on Rush Hour on Dirt uh, back in the 90s and the early 2000s. A number of go-karts that are here today, uh, you know, bearing likenesses to uh, to cars that, um, you know, you covered uh, when Rush Hour on Dirt was was on the air. That's got to be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, take you back a little bit. Yeah, I love seeing the uh, I love seeing the uh, lookalike or the throwback schemes like uh, Brett Hearn's throwback scheme. That dates back to, I want to say, somewhere maybe around 1988, I think, if memory serves me correctly. Of course, you know, when you get to my age, things start getting a little fuzzy and a little hazy. But um, also love the fact that we've got people representing different states. We've got a couple of Massachusetts drivers here. Uh, we've got the contingent, uh, the, the Gills and uh, some of the others that came from the North Country. Uh, uh, race up at uh, the uh, Can-Am Speedway, a uh, place that I've had uh, the pleasure of being at a time or two over the course of the years. This is, this is cool. I love something like that. This is like field of dreams for race cars. Think about it. We built a racetrack in a field, and the drivers came. No, it, it's it's almost exactly like that, really. And this is this event has grown so much in such a short amount of time that it's it's come to the point where uh, John Dumont and the Perrys and everybody that puts this event on has literally had to cap off the entries uh, so that we don't end up with you know a hundred go karts here. Uh, in, in a situation where we've got to be here for, for eight hours. So it's really remarkable uh, what uh, Johnny and, and the guys from DKM and the Perrys have been able to do here in such a short amount of time. And uh, Big Jim uh, on the video this year and last year both. And, um, you know, being able to get this on Facebook Live and broadcast it to the people. And um, it's, it's, really, it's really been a great thing. And, and for them to go ahead and give uh, all the money to uh, Veterans Community Housing Coalition, uh, is is absolutely fantastic as well. Yeah, the amount of money that they've raised, uh, I, I don't know the official dollar figure, but I've heard the unofficial dollar figure, and my eyes lit up like it was Christmas Day when I heard that. Very so. good. And they, they've, they've continued to improve the racetrack over the years as well. I know you mentioned uh, a little bit of banking. Uh, that's uh, something that's different for this year, and uh, the hay bales on the outside are, are considerably more uh, substantial than uh, what they have been in, in years past. And we've gone from having all the sponsor billboards uh, on the outside of the racetrack, too many of them got knocked down, and now they're they're in the infield where people can uh, take a look at them all day long. So. All right, so we do. All right, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, we are going to uh, we're going to begin the activities here for the redraw. Before anybody draws a number, there is a slight matter of the fact that the pole position is open to the highest bidder. Where should we start the bidding? Who wants to go first? 20. All right, we're starting at 20. 21. Anybody else? 22. 22. 22. Anyone? 25. Ooh. 25. 50. Now, you got we got at least two whole dollars here. I mean, come on, we all have a hard enough time doing math as it is. All right, so we're on 25 right now. Anyone 26? 30. Brett Herm just put it up to 30. 40. We just bumped it up to 40. Anybody want to go higher than 40? 45. All right, 45. Anybody else? 50 over here. 50. All right, we're at 50. 50. Anybody want to go higher? 55. 55, 55, 75. Oh, that escalated quickly. Dad's money? <laughs> oh, that was a good. That was a great question. Whose money is it? Is it your dad's? There you go. All right, so we're at seventy-five dollars for the poll. Seventy-five going once. Oh. Uh, oh. Somebody just. Somebody just said, I'll pay a C note if it's Matt Perry. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere Paul Arns is very happy about the pole being auctioned off. Yeah, we, $110 over here. Nick Scavey is in for $110. Anyone else? $110. $120. We got 120. All right. Where's that 120 at? Right there. Right there. All right. We got one. Driver. What driver? Yo. For John Demon. For John. Okay. So we're at 120 dollars for the poll. 130. Are we going 135? Anybody 135? 135. Anyone? 135. We're at 130 right now. 150. 140. 150. We got 150 over here in the back. 155. 160. 160. You want to go 165? No. 160. We're on 160. Anybody else want to go higher than 160 bucks? 160 bucks. 160 bucks. 200. 200 for Matt Perry to start on the pole. Rock, oh, we're not done. 205 over here. 205. 205. 205. 205. No, we already got 205. Go 210, Brian. Brian, 225. 210. All right, we're going to 210. What driver? Charlie. Matt Perry. So we're at 210 for Matt Perry to have the pole position. I, I hope he buys you a lot of beer. <laughs> 210 going once. John Dumont for 220. Oh, 300. I, I love it. Everybody else is going back and forth, fives and tens. He's like, nah, I'll just bump it 85 bucks. I don't care. So we got 300. 300 going once, twice. You bought the pole for 300 bucks, my friend. All right, now we get to find out where everybody else is going to get started. All right, so there is our pole award being presented. And again, the poll went for $300 all benefit VCHC. So now we have the remainder of our competitors who are going to be drawing for their starting spots here in just a moment or two. Then we have those uh, two consolations or B mains coming up that will add four more cars to the back of the feature event field.
Okay. Well, let's get down to the business of doing some draws. All right, so we're going to start with the uh, the Heat winners who are all first to draw. So the Constantino, number nine, is the first one to draw. Where's, uh, where's Dave? There's Dave. All right, Dave's going to get first pick out of the bucket. This could be good. This could be bad. This could be meh. What is it? Oh, it's a two, but it's got a zero alongside of it. That's the bad. The worst number is out. The rest of you guys can all go, whew. Okay, who's next? Uh, Matt Perry. Matt Perry, you're up next. <laughs> Matt's doing pad track prep, and Drew's starting spot number 15. But he says, okay. All right, next. The Bailey 151 next to draw as we're again going through our heat winners. Number eight. That's going to be a good feature starting spot. All right, the uh, Getman number 18 is next to draw. Winner of heat number four. Uh, starting spot number five. Spot number five. All right, and the final heat winner was Chip Constantino. Where's Chip? There he is. And he draws number nine. Number nine. All right, the 25 of uh, d -Sharp. Still some good single digits in there. He did not find one. Starting spot number 17. Brett Mortensen up next. Oh, that's a good one. Starting spot number three for Brett Mortensen. Nick Scavia, you're up next. Fourteen for Nick Scavia. David Herrick, you're up next. There's Dave. It's going to have a DD, a designated drawer. Let's see how she did. Hey, number seven. I'd say she did pretty good inside the top ten. Nothing wrong with that. All right, Brett Hearn. By the way, Eastern States weekend is back this year. Traditional October weekend at Orange County. Oh, outside pole for Brett the Jet. All right, uh, the 77 of Weiss is up next. Zach already uh, bought the pole for 300 bucks. It was you that wasn't All right, starting spot number 18 for. Okay. Next up to draw will be Eric Mack. And Eric draws number one with the one or 11. Uh, Brady Gill is up next. Number 10 starting spot for him. And the 21 of uh, Quentin Walls. He draws number 16. All right, so we're getting down to the final qualifiers here. First uh, will be Mr. DeMond. John? John? He keeps forgetting that he's actually racing in this thing. There you go. Starting spot number 13 for John. Uh, Mr. Ovis, you're up next. Come on over. 
he draws number four. There was a good number left in there, and he found it. All right, Ryan Pepicelli. And uh, number six, yeah, that's okay. Starting outside row number three, uh, Mr. Pierce. And he draws number 19. Ooh. And there's one number left. And uh, Mr. Dyer, if you want to come over and make it official. Last number in the bucket is number 12. All right, so there you go. We have the redraw for the starting lineup. We'll go through that starting lineup when we do our driver introductions for the Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause feature event coming up in a little bit. But over in the pit area, they're getting ready now for the two consolation races. They will be coming up here in just a couple of moments. So Katsi number one comes to life on the back straightaway. Owen Weiss, Jordan Banks will lead the field to green. Weiss driving out of Amsterdam in that number 79 card. And then up to the outside of him, Jordan Banks with a five-star small engine repair car number 19 out of Rotterdam. The 57 of Riley Gill from up the road in Lafargeville with the Toyota of Lafargeville number 57. And then up to the outside of him in the original Pizza Logs, car number one, that is Mike Coffey. Inside row number three, the 827 is Jason Coos. And up to the outside of him, the 2024 is slated to be uh, Hayden Cutlip. Row number four on the inside, that's the 71 of Gerard LeClaire. And up to the outside of him, I believe that's the five of Justin House. Final starter is the 97 of Tanner Warner as we go to green. Down the back stretch, here's Banks to the inside for the number one spot. He will get down as the leader. Weiss trying to hold down the Ford in the number two spot. Top two transfer to the main event. Coffee right back there in third with Riley Gill fourth. Tanner Warner off the pace in the 97 and hang on Gill. Yellow lights are on. Mike Coffee around as well. Coffey was running in third position, one spot out of a transfer. It appears as though Hayden Cutlip not answering the call to the bell with the 2024. The 24P is Michael Monte in the Brian Pesolano lookalike automobile. Hunter Bates slated to be out here as well in the 77. Bonnie Roos not making the call to the bell either. But we have everybody else. So the front row flip for this restart. It's Banks on the inside, Weiss on the outside. Mike Monty, who's had nothing but bad luck in this event. We are not, not in fact... Oh boy. The green flag was never displayed. And now the white flag will be out this time to let the field know that we're going green next time, trying to get everybody doubled up once again. So Michael Monty trying to crack the top two and transfer. He's had a lot of bad luck in the last couple of years of this race. Trying to make the show here today. Green Black coming back out. Monty's inside of Weiss for the final transfer spot down the back straightaway. Good run for Mike Monty. He sneaks by into the number two hole. Trouble. The five of Justin House is broke on the front straightaway, and that's going to do it for him today. Shy of a buy-in. It's all over for House. 
Jordan Banks out in front with the number 19. Mike Monty still running second. Owen Weiss trying to track him down in the third spot, but Weiss just cannot get down to the bottom. Gerard LeClaire inside Weiss now for third at the halfway mark. Six on the board, six remain. Banks still out in front, keeping a steady advantage over Mike Monty. Around the Perry Sunflower Maze and Farm Speedway. One to the infield, that's the 827 of Coos on the back straightaway. Good battle right now for the fourth spot. Mike Coffey trying to get around Owen Weiss. And here comes LeClaire trying to take the final transfer spot away from Mike Monty. Two to go this time. Gerard LeClaire all over the back bumper of Mike Monty down the back straightaway. Top two transfer. White flag is out. One line. Oh no, yellow. Yellow lights are on. Owen Weiss deep into the rose bushes. Off turn number two. And that brings out the late and dramatic yellow. Mike Coffey has been invited to continue this race from the tail for his involvement in the yellow. This time by at a turn number four, looking to go back to green. Jordan Banks, Mike Monty, Gerard LeClaire, single file restart. Can LeClaire get around Mike Monty? Back underway. Mike Coffey trying the top side now. Around LeClaire, he gets into the back of Monty. Everybody in the infield. Oh, and LeClaire's not happy. Gerard LeClaire liked his chances. And he's not happy with the one of Mike Coffey Jr. In the Stuart Friesen lookalike pizza logs automobile. Single file restart again here late in the going. Coffey penalized back to the tail again for turning the 71 of LeClaire. Green flag this time by at a turn number four. Jordan Banks, Mike Monty, the top two. Back to it. Down in the turn number one, it's gonna be Banks. Mike Monty trying to follow him. White slips up to the top. LeClaire's gonna go through. Checkered flag is out. Banks wins it. Mike Monty is second and will get the transfer. LeClaire is third with Weiss fourth and Mike Coffey fifth. Kotze number two coming up, Paul. All right, and Kotze number two, it looks like the uh, pole sitter is gonna be Tomek Kowalczyk uh, with the Dad's Appliance Repair 27, he is out of Glen. Bob Coons outside the front row, the Pitts Motor Service 29, he is from Mechanicville. Row two on the inside is gonna be the uh, number 97C, that is gonna be the nice and easy 97. Uh, Corky Warner out of Johnstown, and then on the outside, Loudon Reimer with the number 12A out of Oley, Pennsylvania, the Jumper Jacks Pro Speed Car. And then you're going to have uh, Garrett Poland inside row three with the number 17, and it'll be uh, Dave Weiss outside with the 77. David Schilling with the 20S and the 91 of the Ginger Ninja Jack Liner are going to be in row number four. Row number five is going to be the straight number 12 and the hatch number 18. And then finally, the two Whitbecks, Thomas on the inside, Shannon on the outside, in the final row. So second consolation race, 12 laps, top two are going to move on to the Sunflower 50 race for a cause. We are green. Kowalczyk jumps out to the early advantage. Corky Warner trying to fight it out here for the number two spot. One car into the bales on the back stretch. That is the uh, Dave Weiss number 77 making contact with the bales and getting his flowers. They'll jump around and join up at the back of the field. Up and Corky Warner going around here under caution. He'll be able to get that car turned around. 
get his spot back. But he's got to get out and get it over the uh, lip of the banking here. Piece of debris laying on the racing surface here in turn number four. That's a pipe and it's a little warm. So Corky will cycle back around, back into his respectful starting position. The white flag will wave. No laps complete yet in this second consolation race. We're staying under yellow for the moment. David Schilling slotting in in the number six spot. The two 405s going to line up next to each other. All right, ready for a restart here in consolation number two. The field goes a little bit early, but green flag will wave and it will stay. No, it will not. Yellow will come out. So we'll try to start one more time. A little bit early on the acceleration there for Tomek Kowalczyk. He will lead the field down here for the restart. Here we go green. Bob Coons trying to slot into the number two position here on the takeoff lap. Reimer up to third, Schilling into fourth. Corky Warner rounding out the top five as one of the whipback carts is battling him for that spot. They are hot and heavy in the middle of the pack. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, it is still Kowalczyk holding on to the lead, and the yellow flag will wave. There was trouble for the number 71. Claire will have to tag up at the back of the field. As they'll go ahead and double back up, we have one lap complete. One T off the pace a little bit here as well. That is uh, Bonnie I'm driving the number one T. Of course, member of the uh, Fonda Speedway safety team. So Kowalczyk and Koontz continue to hold on to the two qualifying spots here from the front row with one lap complete in the second consolation race as they get ready to come back off turn number four. We're back to green. Oh, look at the outside move by Schilling. That moves him up into the number four spot. Meanwhile, Reimer slides down to the inside of Bob Coons, takes over that runner-up position. One car sideways, that's Weiss, jams up everybody from about six spot on back. That allows the top six to break away on their own. With three laps complete, Kowalczyk leads Reimer second, Schilling knocking at the door from the number three spot as they work their way away from the 29 of Bob Coons. They've separated from him by about three or four card lengths. Whitbeck battling it out with Warner now as they go around turn three and four. Lap number five complete. They're catching up to Bonnie Russ at the back of the field. Bonnie will go ahead and pull that down into the infield. Grass that your leader spins it off turn number four. Well, Kowalczyk goes from penthouse to outhouse in the blink of an eye and what was a pretty tight battle at the front of the field with Loudon Reimer. And David Schilling. Schilling now inherits the final transfer spot. Coons is third. Looks like Corky Warner is right there behind him. And then you've got one of the wetback carts up in the mix there as well. And also coming back up through. go getting everybody into line we'll go green next time by so 
So Reimer now leads, Schilling in second on this restart, one lap shy of the halfway point in the second consolation race. Field back off turn number four, back to the green. Reimer will lead him down into turns one and two. Coons will try to jump to the inside of Schilling. Schilling will come down to shut the door on him, and Whitbeck will slide through on Coons, move up into the number three spot with the purple 405. Watch for David Weiss, too, trying to do work on the outside lane. Oh, he gets tangled up with the Trump 2024 car, and we are going to have a multi-car incident. Bringing out the caution here in turn number four. And it looks like Kowalczyk may be all done with the number 27. They're going to go ahead and take that car down into the infield. He started leading this, but couldn't survive all those early restarts. So six laps of the 12 are complete in this second consolation event. Halfway through in this second consolation race, it's still Reimert and Schilling leading the field. And checking something on the back of the Weiss, number 77. And unfortunately, it looks like a mechanical is going to take him out of contention to qualify for tonight's Sunflower 50 race for a cause to benefit VCHC. And now it looks like Corky Warner having trouble with the number 97 over here at the entrance to turn number two as he had a hand up in the air. Apparently lost fire on the cart. Trying to get it restarted. Looks like Bonnie Russ is going to take the uh, 1T pit side here as well. And Warner climbing up and out of the cart. And it looks like, unfortunately, his race is going to be done as well. So a little bit of attrition here under this lap six caution flag. As we get ready to come to the green, six down, six remain. Reimer will lead it through turns one and two. Here comes Whitbeck to the inside on Schilling, taking away that final transfer spot. Schilling fights his way back down ahead of Coons, back down to the bottom of the racetrack off turn number two. And watches the purple 405 of Whitbeck directly in front of him. Now in that last transfer spot with only about three and a half laps to go. Schilling trying to knock, knock, knock and open that door. Whitbeck trying to keep it shut with two laps left to go. Loudon Reimer holding on to the lead with the number 12A machine. As he comes around, he'll see the two-to-go signal this time. Whitbeck still in that second position with Schilling trying to get back into that transfer spot with the white flag waving this time. Reimer brings it off turn number two. He's going to now work off turn number four to grab the win, and it will be Whitbeck who will hold on for the final transfer spot. So Reimert and the purple Whitbeck 405 are the two cars that will move on into tonight's Sunflower 50. So the heats and the consolation races are now complete. We'll find out who has provisionals. We'll find out about buy-ins. That will set the remainder of the starting field for tonight's 50-lap Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause, which will be coming up here in just a few minutes. Again, we want to say a big thanks to some of our uh, great sponsors, including DKM Fabrication and JK Signworks for all their help. Again, thanks to the Murphy family and H&M Equipment for that awesome flyover at the start of the program this evening. And, of course, a thanks to Empire Hay. Not only do they do... Uh, hay bales small or big like the ones that we have this year the big ones but they also do custom plowing and custom planting no job is too small and there might only be one or two jobs that are too big for them so get in touch with the gang from empire hay next time you're looking for plowing planting or paying 
as the case may be. All right, so a little break in the action here, folks, while we get the uh, drivers ready for driver introductions for our Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause. Our feature presentation will be coming up in just a little bit. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is our pleasure to introduce to you the starting field for tonight's VCHC Benefit Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause. And we're going to start with the drivers that bought in at $250 a spot, raising an extra $1,250 for the cause this evening, starting in the 29th position by himself in row number 15 from Mechanicville, driving car number 29 is Bob Coons. Row number 14 on the outside, 28th starter out of Boston Spa, New York, driving the original Pizza Logs, car number one, it's Mike Coffey Jr. And on the inside of the 14th row, 27th starter out of New Lebanon, New York, driving car number 18H, it's Logan Hatch. The final of the two buy-in competitors will share row number 13 on the outside of that 13th row, starting 26 aboard the number 20S from East Greenbush, New York, the thrilling David Schilling. And alongside of him, starting 25th, he'll be jumping aboard one of the Whitbeck 405 machines from Saratoga Springs, the Ginger Ninja Jack Leonard. 24th starter on the outside of row number 12, making the race by virtue of being the final car to transfer out of the second Concy. Out of Brunswick, New York, it's Dirt Car's favorite son, Travis Whitbeck. And to the inside of him, out of Kennedy Harry, driving in car number 24P, it's Mike Monty. Then we go to the outside of row 11, 22nd starting spot, also transferring from a consolation race today from Ole, Pennsylvania, driving the 12A, Loudon Reimert. And then on the inside of that row, driving the number 19 machine, he is out of Rotterdam. That'll be Jordan Banks. Row number 10 on the outside, starting in spot number 20. From Perth, New York, it is Mr. DKM himself driving in the Bob McCready car number nine tonight, Dave Constantino. And the inside of him out of Stillwater aboard car number 32, it's TJ Pierce. We move up to row number nine. Outside row nine, 18 starting spot out of Amsterdam. Driving the number 77 will be Dave Weiss. And alongside of him, coming from the number 17th starting spot, from Castleton, Vermont, aboard car number 25, Tyler Ducharme. Row number 8 on the outside, starting in 16th. Driving car number 21W, he's a sportsman driver, an enduro driver, dirt bikes, four-wheelers, go-karts, everything. It is Quinn Wallace. And to his inside from right here on the farm, driving in the Perry Sunflower Maze, car number 74, it is Matt Perry. We move outside, row number 7, 14th starting spot, goes to Amsterdam, New York's Nick Scavia, aboard car number 438. And to his inside, one of the principals that helps make this event happen, and he gets to drive in it, too, out of Perth, starting inside that row from 13th to 31 of John Dumond. Twelfth starter outside, row number six out of Rotterdam, driving in the Ronnie Johnson lookalike 2JD, that is Jarrett Dyer. And to his inside, out of Amsterdam, in the tabloid graphics car number 15, it is Eric E.J. Fast Track Mac. And now your top 10 starters, ladies and gentlemen. Starting 10th, hailing from the North Country, Lafargeville, New York, aboard the number 51, it's Brady Gill. And starting 9th, he is driving the number 10 machine, hailing from Perth, it's Chip Constantino. Eighth starter out of Waverly, New York, driving in car number 151, that is Bryce Bailey. And the inside of him, out of Johnstown, aboard car number seven, it's David Herrick, the third. 
We move to the sixth starting spot, and that'll be the number 11A. That is out of Amsterdam, Ryan Pepicelli. And to his inside, starting fifth, another driver from the North Country, from Lafargeville, the 18 is Joe Getman. Another North Country driver starts outside the second row aboard car number 7H. It is Joe Ovis. And to his inside, starting third tonight, out of Pattersonville aboard car number 1B, it is Brett Mortensen. And then your front row starter starting outside row number one from Sussex, New Jersey. It is the number 20, the Jet, Brett Hearn. And by the way, there is no truth to the rumor that the winner of tonight's race gets a guaranteed starting spot at Eastern States. I just want to dispel that rumor now. And starting from the pole, which earned us an extra $300 in donations for VCHC, he hails from New Berlin, driving the number 67, Zach Welch. Twenty-nine cars getting ready to go for 50 laps around the Perry family sunflower maze. The sun has gone down over Broad Alban. The track is ready. The drivers are ready. All right, drivers, to your carts, please. Drivers, strap. well, I would say strap in, but that's regular racing. These carts don't have lap belts. They don't have seat belts. Zach Welch and Brett Hearn are going to lead this field of 29 Northeast Modified Predator carts. To the green flag in tonight's Sunflower 50. The race for a cause to benefit the Veterans Community Housing Coalition. And there goes the field. Brett Mortensen, Joe Ovis in row number two. Joe Getman and the 11 Orion Peppa Sally in row number three. David Herrick and Bryce Bailey in row number four. Chip Constantino, Brady Gill in row five. Eric Mack and Jarrett Dyer in row six and row seven. John Dumond and Nick Scavia. Matt Perry, Quinn Wallace, Tyler Ducharme, Dave Weiss, TJ Pierce, Dave Constantino, Jordan Banks, Loudon Reimert, Michael Monte, Travis Whitbeck, Jack Laner, David Schilling, Logan Hatch, Mike Coffey, and Bob Coons. 29 carts, 50 laps. <laughs> and now they will get into formation. A three-wide salute around the one-tenth of a mile. Perry Sunflower Maze Speedway. How about that, Paul? Yeah, how about making some noise for these boys when they come around three-wide here off turn number four as we get ready to go racing for a cause here on a beautiful Sunday night. We call them... The Sunflower Shaking, Chain Rattling Beasts of the Northeast, the Northeast Modified Predator Carts. For your viewing pleasure at Perry Sunflower Maze. Who is going to be standing tall at the end of 50 laps? The signal goes down to double up the field and Paul who do you have your eye on here today? I think it's hard to bet against the guy on the outside of the front row. Absolutely. And, Paul, you noted earlier that Hearn's approach to this track and this race looked a little bit different driving style-wise than many of the other drivers, a lot straighter, a lot smoother. I'm going to go with Brett Mortensen. I'll take him to win today. Zach Welch and Brett Hearn on the front row. Coming into the start zone. The Sunflower 50 is underway. 
Oh, and there's already a problem. Michael Monty. Down the back stretch for the first time. Current settles in the third position. Brett Morrison under Zach Welch. Hang on, trouble. DJ Pierce is involved. He was the first car off down the back straightaway. Nick Scavia also in trouble with the seven of David Herrick the third. And a caution with zero laps shown complete on the lap counter is not good news, Paul, for some of these guys that were worried about fuel mileage. Uh, two quart, maybe four quart fuel cell, one gallon uh, aboard these go-karts. Oh, no. Oh, somebody just lost a body brace. And TJ Pierce ran right over it. He had nowhere to go. But yeah, not a lot of fuel capacity. That's something we're gonna have to keep an eye on if the caution flags run rampant today. We can almost take an inventory as they come by us, being that we're, we're elevated up on the announcer wagon as to who has uh, what for a fuel cell. We're looking uh, just through the guy's legs here. The fuel cell's right below the wheel. The steering column, Hearn, I believe, only has the two-quart cell. Constantino with a two as well. So I notice Scavia has about a four-quart. Yeah, if crew chief was on the radio right now, he'd be telling you, save, save, save. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to start sounding like we're doing a NASCAR broadcast. Green flag next time by in the restart zone between the two cones here on the front straightaway off turn number four. Zach Welch and Brett Hearn, Brett Mortensen, and Joe Obis, Joe Getman, Ryan Pepicelli, the first three rows as we get ready to go. Back to green right now. And it will be Travis Welch, excuse me, Zach Welch showing the way. Brett Mortensen settles into the number two spot. Brett Hearn running in third position right now. Ovis and Pepicelli in a great battle. Look at Ryan Pepicelli on the outside lane. Pepicelli testing the limits of this racetrack early on. And he's going to go right around the outside of Joe Ovis for fourth spot. Trouble on the front straightaway. Oh, boy. The track is absolutely blocked. Nick Scavia, David Schilling, John Dumont, Tyler Ducharme, Bryce Bailey, Quinn Wallace is involved, Bob Coons is in there as well, Matt Perry, basically everybody from about eighth on back was in it to some extent, and it must have started with Bryce Bailey because he's the furthest running of all the cars involved. And now the question is going to be who can continue on. Coffee is headed for the infield, and he is going to pull his helmet off. Oh, and you can see either a tie rod or spindle broken on the pizza logs ride. Bryce Bailey's cart being pushed back to the inside as well. One more cart off turn number two, and Paul, I think that's Chip Constantino's number 10. Yeah, I believe you're right, that cart being uh, pushed. Oh, actually, no, that's the other Constantino. That's the number nine that is back there, the Bob McCready tribute car, and that car looks like it's nosed into the uh, pit area, and I believe he's going to get up and out of the cart, so he may be out of the running here unless they can fix whatever the problem is here under this caution flag. Well, you're right, Paul. I, I think Chip is out, too. I, that, that, indeed, it is Chip, Chip Constantino's Duchess overhead doors number 10 at the infield uh, just inside the second turn right now. And Chip is nowhere to be seen. So the, the brothers Constantino, Dave and Chip, both out of it here early on. Well, let's see what happens on this restart here. Even though the... Uh 
traction was applied to the outside. The inside still seems to be the preferred lane. At least we're getting up and off the corners, and that's the lane that Welch will have for the restart. Brett Mortensen is going to be on the outside, and notice where Hearn is. He's inside row number two. The guys on the inside row, they want to keep everybody on the outside. The guys on the outside row want to squeeze everybody down and make them try to run as tight as possible to slow them down when they're coming around the corners. Trouble Tyler Ducharme is under power now. Or not under power, I should say. He will get a restart. Keeping an eye on Ryan Pepicelli on this restart, Paul. He's been the only driver that can actually make any ground up on the outside lane right now. He went around the seven of Joe Olvis just before the yellow came out. Really good on the outside of turns one and two. He loses a little bit on our end, the three and four end, but Pepicelli really good on the top in the early going. One of the only guys to make it work up there. All right, should get the one to go, and they come around this time. So Welch leads. Mortensen is second. Hearn is third. Pepicelli is fourth. Ovis is in the number five spot. Herrick is in sixth for the restart. Mack is seventh. Gill is eighth. Looks like uh, Wyatt is ninth. And Loudon Reimer rounding out the top ten here as we get ready for a restart with three laps down. Welch on the inside, Mortensen on the outside, coming back to the restart zone. Hearn and Pepicelli in the second row, back to green. And it will be Zach Welch. Here's Brett Mortensen to the inside. Contact for the lead. Mortensen charging through on the bottom. And Brett Mortensen, your third starter, goes to the front. Third spot now belongs to Pepicelli. Hearn in fourth. Fifth is a great battle between the two number sevens. Olvis in the black number seven. David Herrick in the white number seven. Here's Pepicelli inside Welch for the number two spot. Six laps on the board. Trouble for Joe Getman. Getman in the infield. His day is over. Up on the front right now, it's Ryan Pepicelli. Trying to track down your leader, Brett Morrison. Zach Welch is third, Hearn is fourth. Fifth right now is Ovis. Hang on off turn four. Everybody is A-OK -okay besides the last traffic cone. Eric Mack hooked together with Ovis. That's the battle for fifth position as Brett Morrison hits lap traffic. Morrison to the inside of Quinn Wallace. Lap 10 is on the board. Zach Welch continuing to hold the lead. Brett Hearn has worked his way up into the number two position. Those two have pulled away from the battle for the number three spot, now held by Eric Mack, as Mack takes it over with the white number 15, going back and forth with Ovis with the number seven. That is a great battle for that third spot, but right now it is half a track behind the race leader who is already starting to put cars a lap down. Hearn chasing after Welch as they work through turn number two here on lap number 13. Looks like Quinn Wallace is going to drop out with the number 21. So the leaders working their way through traffic right now. And then third place is Ovis, followed by Mack in fourth. Brady Gill has worked his way up into the number five position. Herrick is in the number six spot as the rest of them all battle hot and heavy. And included in there is Jordan Banks with the number 19. Banks came through the consolation race. And we've got a tangle in turn two. And the yellow will fly here on lap number 16. Well, two cars getting tangled up. One of them was the 25 of Tyler Ducharme. Looks like the other one might have been the uh, number seven of David Herrick. And it looks like Herrick is uh, pulling up here on the outside of the track. I think he's just looking for traffic to clear. Did not take long for the leaders to get into traffic. We were watching the battle for uh, what actually was the battle for third between Welch and Hearn coming through the traffic, but it is Brett Mortensen and Ryan Pepicelli who run one and two here on lap number 16. Uh, Pepicelli is not afraid to get up on the outside lane with the 11A car, and he proved that as Mortensen, somewhat conservative, ran the bottom in lap traffic waiting 
for a chance to go underneath some of the lap cars and Pepicelli saw it as his opportunity to try to get around the outside of Mortensen for the lead. When you get a lineup scored away here, then we'll go ahead and double them back up, get ready for the restart here with 16 to 50 complete in our Sunflower 50 race for a cause. Got to give a call out to some drivers that have come from deep in the field, one of them being Travis Whitbeck with the number 405, bought his way into this race, is currently running in the top 10, and also mentioned the uh, number 19 of uh, Jordan Banks. He started way back in 21st, and he has worked his way up inside the top 10. Restart coming here with lap number 16 on the board. Green flag back in the air. Mortensen with Pepicelli going around the outside. We're going to have a jam up in turn number two. And that is going to also collect a couple of cars on the back stretch. And the yellow flag will come back out. A uh, tough break for Brad Hearn, Matt Perry. Another card involved down on the inside, hidden behind a couple of the billboards right now. Rob Perry says single file on this restart, and Brett Mortensen's probably happier about that than anybody because Ryan Pepicelli really good uh, getting that thing wound up on the outside lane off these restarts. And with two cautions on the same lap, this is going to be a benefit for Welch. It's going to be a single file restart. So you won't have to worry about Ryan trying to come around him on the outside, coming off turn number two. Well, there goes my pick to win. Brett Hearn is never out of anything, especially with 34 laps left to go. He's got a long way to go, and a single final restart is not going to help him, certainly, but we will keep our eyes on Hearn. He's going to need some cautions to stay on the lead lap. So to reset things for you, it's still Brett Mortensen leading at Pepicelli second with Welch third. Bradley uh, Gill is now in fourth. Eric Mack sits in the number five position. Max started 11th, so it's been a good first couple laps for him. Nick Scavia talking it over there with uh, Jack Leonard, or with Travis Whitbeck, I should say, I believe. You have the two 405s out there. I believe the purple 405 is Travis, the blue 405 is Jack. That is what we've been told, correct. Jack's a little bit taller than Travis. And remember, Jack was a buy-in, so he has worked his way now into the top ten, just trying to stay out of trouble here in the early going. So ready for a single-file restart, lap number 16. Green flag back out. Mortensen will lead him off turn number two and down the backstretch. Papacelli trying to build up some momentum here, but he's got to watch to his inside. Welch trying to retake the number two spot. As they work back off turn number two, Scavia has little contact with Whitbeck, able to get that car straightened out as we hit the lap 18 mark and start closing in on the halfway point. The leaders trying to get away. Now a battle for the number four spot as Eric Mack will work his way down to the inside. So Mack will move ahead of Bradley Gill to fourth, but it's still Brett Mortensen leading as we come to lap number 20. Brett Mortensen in control. Pepicelli keeps looking to the outside lane, but there's just nothing there. At this point in time, Travis Welch trying to work under Pepicelli, but he's got nothing. Further back in the pack, there's trouble. Later, later is broke. Later to the infield, and that's going to end his day. And no trouble. Pepicelli spins out of the number two spot, and that's going to bring yellow. 
out on the speedway. Your second place cart facing the wrong way at the top of turn number one. And Ryan Pepicelli is going to be fun to watch coming back through the pack. He's going to have to do it on the outside lane. But he has been very, very good up there tonight. And that number 11A is going to be something to watch for the final 28 laps of the Sunflower 50. Upon the double file restart, Brent Mortensen will still be your leader since about lap six or so. Zach Welch will line up outside him. Eric Mack is up to third. The 51 of Brady Gill will be fourth. Fifth spot will go to Scavia. Whitbeck is sixth. As we get ready to go back to green, Dave Weiss back there as well for seventh. It's a good restart and we're back to it. Trouble, there goes Welch up and over at turn number one. Red flag is gonna come out immediately. Zach Welch up and over in turn number one. And it looks like he's all right. He's going to get back behind the wheel, as a matter of fact. And if the 67 can restart, and it can, Welch will rejoin from the tail. Kudos to Zach Welch. He was the highest bidder for the pole position for tonight's Sunflower 50, donating $300 to the Veterans Community Housing Coalition. And this is going to set up, I believe, another single file restart. I would think. And how about Eric Mack? Again, staying out of trouble is one of the keys here in the first part of the race while there's still a lot of cards out on the track. So Eric has worked his way up into the second position now, and then Gill in third, and the Gills from the North Country, as well as Getman, well, the track at Can-Am Speedway, the car track, not much bigger than this one, so they're used to running on a little bull ring. A couple of great points there, Paul. Eric Mack has had speed at this event before, but he's run into trouble. You mentioned how key it is to stay out of trouble. Mack is going to be in second position, and the single-file restart will benefit him because I'm not sure how good he is on the outside lane. Getting ready to go back to it. 22 laps on the board. Brett Morrison showing the way. Mack in number two spot. Gill is there for third. Keep your eyes on Pepicelli tearing up the outside lane in the number 11 car. John Dumont trying to work the top further back. Hang on, Welch goes around again. He's going to be able to right the ship, but he's right in front of your leaders. And now yellow flag comes out. Caution coming out. Zach Welch turned around on the outside of turn number three. Got the ship going again, but was right in front of your leaders. And not quite up to speed. So that being the reason for the caution. Started with 29 carts. We have 24 laps on the board and 17 drivers still on the racetrack. Brett Mortensen, Eric Mack, Brady Gill in the 51, Nick Scavia, Travis Whitbeck, Dave Weiss, John Dumond, Bob Coons, Jarrett Dyer, Matt Perry, David Herrick III, Brett Hearn, Tyler Ducharme, Joe Ovis, Ryan Pepicelli. Back to green. 24 on the board. Hang on, Dyer goes around. 
And Ovis as well. And that brings out the yellow once again here on lap number 24. One lap shy of halfway, it is Joe Olvis at the top of turn number two. Him and Jarrett Dyer both involved under this caution flag period. Getting ready to come back to green. And we're back to it. One lap shy of halfway. Bumper tag throughout the first corner. Everybody gets through okay. Pepicelli a big gainer. He's trying to work his way back towards the front. Brett Mortensen still the leader at the halfway point. 25 are in, 25 to go. Mack riding second, does not appear to be able to do anything with Morrison at this time. Meanwhile, Dave Weiss gets feisty with Travis Wickbeck. That's for spot number five. Matt Perry trying to work the top. Trying to get around Bob Coons. Peppa Selly has got it wound up now as well. Gill right on the back bumper of Eric Mack through turns number three and four. That is the battle for spot number two. Lap number 30 on the board this time, the leader, Brett Mortensen. Mortensen carries it back down into turns one and two as we watch the battle for second. Working off turn number two, Eric Mack holding that spot with the white number 15, Brady Gill in third, and we will get a caution. Wyatt with the number two lines up against the bales on the outside of turns one and two, and the yellow comes out now at the lap 30 mark with 20 laps left to go here in the Sunflower 50. So caution flag waving, interrupting that battle for second behind your race leader, Brett Mortensen. Mortensen had been able to gap out just a little bit. Well, I, I think I just saw Brady Gill duck to the infield to cool his tires off. That's, you know, that's very possible. Uh, we've had a couple of long green flag runs here, and these tires will heat up pretty quickly. So keeping him single file for the restart. 20 laps left to go. Mortensen looking to gap out again. He'd love this race to go green for a little while so he could pull away. He hits the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. Top five all charge off turn number two and head down the back stretch. By the way, I hope you've been paying attention to the uh, Ryan Pepicelli, number 11, because he is knocking at the door of getting back into the top 10. He's been passing cards left and right. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Mortensen not quite getting away this time from Eric Mack. The gap is only about one cart length. Gill continues to run in third, Scabia in fourth. And we've got one cart moving around on the outside here off turn number four. That is the number seven of Ovis, who is in danger of going down one lap to the leaders. So Ovis trying to hang on to the lead lap while the battle for the race lead continues here with 15 laps to go. Mack looking for a way to get by the 1B, tries to get down to the inside here in turns three and four. Morrison doing a great job of holding him off. Here comes Brady Gill into the mix for the number three spot. Ovis is into the bales in turn number two, and that will bring out the caution. Looks like Zach Welch also buried himself in the flowers with the number 67, the driver that started on the pole, and uh, things were going okay until they weren't. He wound up on his side in turn number one, and he winds up tangled up here in turns three and four, and that will bring the caution flag back out over the field. Dave Weiss in the number 77 now cracking the top five for the first time. 36 complete, 14 left to go. 
Mortensen continues to lead from Mack in second, Gill in third, Scavia in fourth, Weiss in fifth. Well, that was as serious of a challenge as we've seen Brett Mortensen face since taking the lead about 30 laps ago. You wonder what Eric Mack has for Brett on this restart. And, by the way, Ryan Pepicelli back up to the number eight position, running that outside lane. Back to green we come with 14 to go. The field charges back through turns one and two. John Dumont going to go to the outside now in a battle for position up through turns three and four. And he will muscle his way around the whip at 405. Papaselli trying to hook up behind him. Dumont going to that top lane. Maybe he's found something there as Mortensen continues to hold the lead. The yellow flag flies again. Uh, I think uh, Brett Hearn's got a body rub on the number 20 that's cutting down the tire on that car. And he may not be aware of it. They obviously had contact somewhere. Hearn took a trip down into the hay bales. On that restart, he was pushed down into the infield hay bales off turn number two. And whoever got into the back of him pushed the back bumper right into the right rear tire. You can see the back bumper is uh, right into the tire. They're going to try to pull it off there, but it's not going to be easy for one man to yank. That steel bumper off the tire. Brett waves his hands. He's all done. How about a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Brett Hearn. Graciously took a Sunday to come up here and race with us at the Sunflower 50. 920-plus career wins, but tonight will not be one of them. All right, 37 down, 13 to go when we come back to the restart zone. Mortensen has held off the challenges repeatedly from Eric Mack here through the series of restarts here in the mid-stages of the race. He's going to have to do it at least one more time here as we go back to green. Ryan Pepicelli again going to work topside, working on Whitbeck with the 405. Dumont running up on the outside lane there as well as we complete lap number 38. Inside lane was open for Scavia just for a moment to try to get up into that number three spot. We are 11 laps away from the checkered flag. Mortensen and Mack breaking away now by about two card lengths, trying to settle this one amongst themselves. But we will get a caution flag as we complete lap 40 for two cards tangled up up in turn number two. Zach Welch, Brady Gill, among those involved, the initial pair looks like the two of Jarrett Dyer. And possibly the seven of David Herrick stuck together. They'll get them separated. 39 laps now on the board. So timing and scoring going back a lap. That gives us 11 laps to go. And Ryan Pepicelli looks really good, Paul. I'm just not sure if he has enough time to get back to the front. Well, having these, uh, having the stop and go action here in this stage of the race is definitely helping him. But the problem is he needs to be able to get a lap complete to be able to get out there on the outside and start making moves. And the problem is, as he's doing that, I'm sure other drivers are thinking maybe the same thing. I've seen Dumont kind of running the outside, trying it there as well. Almost like they're trying to hook up in a two-car train and just drive their way forward on the top side. Right. Well, you said it, I think, exactly. It was easy for Pepicelli at the back when everybody was on the bottom, but now you get up into the top eight, the top seven. John Dumond is trying to work the outside lane, so there are times when the track is blocked in front of him, and that's kind of what he's been battling with these last couple of laps. Between Travis Whitbeck, Matt Perry, and John Dumond, the track has been completely plugged up in front of Ryan Pepicelli, and he just has no place to go. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Mortensen and Mack have been able to gap out when we get under green. They're able to open up a couple of car links on Brady Gill, who sits there in the number three position. And you've got uh, Scabia in fourth, Weiss in fifth. 
Dumond is sixth. Looks like uh, Whitbeck in seventh. Pepicelli in eighth. And I believe that is uh, Perry in ninth with the number 74. And Bob Coons, who bought his way into this race, sits in the number 10 spot. It's a great run for Bob Coons. We'll see if he can get up any further. Brett Morrison, Eric Mack, and Brady Gill, your top three, getting ready to go back to green. And we are back underway. 11 laps to go in the Sunflower 50. Morrison escapes. Off turn number two down the back straight away. Mack trying to keep the 15 straight. Pepicelli up on the outside again with the 11. Matt Perry gets by Travis Whitbeck for seventh position. Oh, and he turns him. Whitbeck goes around, and it's a four-car incident. At turn number three, Whitbeck, Bob Coons, Tyler Ducharme, David Herrick the third. All involved in turn number three, and the yellow is back on with 41 laps on the board. Your top four or five remaining unchanged. Dave Weiss in that fifth position. He started 10th. So it's been a nice evening for Weiss. Dumont is up to sixth, who started 13th. 41 laps ago, Matt Perry started 15th. He is seventh. Pepicelli is eighth. Ducharme ninth. Zach Welch is 10th. Coons now 11th. Whitbeck, Herrick, and Jared Dyer rounding out the field. 14 carts remain on the racetrack with nine laps left to go. Looks like a lineup shuffle towards the back of the pack. Next time I will be ready to go once again. Can Eric Mack do anything with Brett Mortensen? Will they get together and pave the way for Brady Gill or Nick Scavia or Dave Weiss? Well, we're gonna find out. Back to it here at the Sunflower. Down to turn number one. One more time, a little bit of bumper tag. Pepicelli trying to be the benefactor around the outside. Pepicelli's the first car out of line, trying to work his way around Dumont for sixth position down the back straight away. Here comes Weiss, he gets under Scavia. Dumont will follow through. So Scavia now fighting on the outside of John Dumont. Morrison still the race leader. Mack there for second. Gill, it's a three-car breakaway up front. Five laps to go this time by. Your top three, unchanged. Pepicelli still trying to move. Weiss is fourth to Bond fifth. Morrison pulls away by a cart length or more now. Eric Mack needs three really, really good laps if he wants to be able to get Morrison. But it just doesn't look like he can do it. Two laps left to go for Brett Morrison. White flag this time by for Brett Morrison. One more time around. Mack trying to do everything he can. One last shot. Out of turn four, Brett Morrison wins his second career Sunflower 50. Eric Mack, Brady Gill, Dave Weiss, John Dumont the top five. Scavia, Perry, sixth and seventh. Pepicelli is eighth. Welch, ninth. Ducharme, tenth. Coons, eleventh. Whitbeck, twelfth. David Herrick, the third. Thirteenth, unofficially, Jared Dyer will be scored in fourteenth position. Ladies and gentlemen, how about that Sunflower 50? Another great race for the cause, the Veterans Community Homeless Coalition.
So Brett Morrison finds himself in a familiar position. Perry Family Sunflower May Speedway Victory Lane. Morrison over Eric Mack and and we'll try to get the top three back closer to the announcer's wagon here. Pictures on what side? Light behind you? Brett Morrison, first of all, congratulations. Job well done. Great crowd, great cause, great win. Oh, thank you. Uh, that was a lot of work and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's tough with uh, these guys like Eric right on your bumper the whole time. Um, but some of these guys are professional racers, and I beat them. So, I'm, I mean, I'm so much better than they are. But uh, anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I liked it. Well, you were, you were pretty much home free from the point you took the lead, but it looked like either you were starting to go away a little bit around lap 30, Eric Mack was heating up a little bit, and it seemed like that was maybe the highest stress and tension point of the race for you. Yeah, the first uh, half of the race was, wasn't too bad, and then uh, I started getting pretty fatigued at the end, um, and then the cart was uh, going away a little bit as the track was getting slicker, but uh, we held on to it, thankfully. Well, you certainly did. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Sunflower 50, Brett Morrison. Eric Mack. Where's Eric Mack? Here he is. While they take a couple of pictures with Brett, we'll get a quick word with Eric. Eric, it's, uh, I don't think it's the first time after a Sunflower 50 that I've heard you get out and say, I'm too old for this. Um, I'm, I'm actually getting younger now, so it's going the other way, but I want to thank everybody today. This was a winning event from start to finish. Everybody here is a winner, and it's unbelievable what we can do in a small backyard here. It's awesome. Well, you said it. This uh, this event just keeps getting bigger and bigger every single year, and uh, thanks to DKM and you guys and the effort that you put in to make this what it is, as well as Rob and everybody with the Perry family. And um, yes, what do you think Johnny for Dumont, Johnny Dumont? Yeah, of course. Off. Johnny Dumont, Matt Perry, Wendy Perry, Stephanie Perry, Melissa Perry, all the Perrys, uh, Mom and Pa Perry, uh, all the Dumonts. Uh, we had. The parents help. Bruce and Ella has been here since 9 o'clock this morning helping. Uh, there's so many people to thank. And they do it all for fun. And, you know, it's like living a dream, you know, a childhood dream of racing in the backyard. Well, thank you very much. Eric Mack on the podium tonight with the Sunflower 50. And Mr. Brady Gill, congratulations. Uh, another year here in uh, Broad Albany. Another really solid run for you. Yeah, we, uh, we kept it out of the fence this time. Uh, Second year down here, and uh, to bring it home third, uh, we just had a really good cart all day. Like, it just had really good speed, and uh, just kind of picked my battles. Um, coming up through the field, we started 10th, so uh, just kind of took them as we could get them and tried to avoid some of the uh, some of the spins and some of the wrecks, and uh, once you get to this top three, you know, everyone's pretty, you know, obviously you've earned your way to the top three, so uh, I was more worried about uh, Nick coming behind me, but... Uh, I guess we had a little bit of a gap on him, so. 
Well, uh, as the race went on, did you feel like you liked the track as, as it got harder, or did you think maybe in the beginning, uh, you know, I had more grip? Talk to me here. I don't know. Hard for me to tell if, if it a little bit of rubber on the bottom and, and gripped up, or how did you feel about it at the end? Um, I'm not a kart racer, so I do this for fun, and uh, I've been here a couple times. I still quite haven't gotten turns one and two figured out, but uh, I was telling Eric that... Um, I actually fanned out like a cart and a half wider than him um, getting into three, and I could actually get a good run off of four. So I don't know if it took rubber, but uh, it, you could still you could race all over it. We passed in the middle. We passed on the bottom. It was it was really good. Well, good deal. Thank you very much, Brady. Brady Gill, third place tonight with the Sunflower 50. Again, Brett Mortensen, your winner. Rob Perry. Rob Perry, come here. Talk to the people just for a minute. Uh, everybody here uh, and a lot of people watching at home, a lot of people uh, not only with uh, the Veterans Community Homeless Coalition, but uh, people that they, they help and will help uh, have you and a whole bunch of other people do uh, to thank. Well, I mean, you know, we, we do this for fun mainly, and uh, it took off, and we got thinking about it, and we said, we had all these guys that wanted to do this. We had all these people putting up money for laps and winning. And I said, this could get out of control real quick. And I said, let's do this for charity and raise it for a cause, a good cause. And uh, this is amazing. Oh, good call. And, and like I said, uh, thank you. And on behalf of everybody here, thank you, Rob, and your whole family. And uh, we can't wait for next year. Me neither. There you go. Rob Perry from here at uh, Perry Sunflower Maze, everybody. Paul, I think that is going to do it. For uh, me down here, Paul's left his post, it looks like, as a matter of fact. I'm sure he's somewhere, but that is it for everything here. Trackside, a couple more photos. I'll get out of the way, and another Sunflower 50 in the books.